Hello and welcome back to the Nexus Gaming series. I am the Crushinator and I will be your host for this evening's Division E matchup between Phoenix Rising Amethyst and Illa Dancing Queens. Everyone in the chat's ready already. We've got some cat summons. So we've got a little bit of time till our lobby is up and running, which shouldn't be too long here. So I'll take the opportunity to let you know about today's teams and the tale of the tape. Phoenix Rising Amethyst, they're having a tough go of it this season. They're 1 and 16 on the map record. Their most played map so far, they've gone to Infernal Shrine seven times and a lot of twos. I've, they've been to uh, Towers of Doom twice as well as most other maps here. So possibly going to see some Infernal Shrines today and Phoenix Rising Amethyst willing to go pretty much anywhere else on the map front. The heroes they've played the most so far this season, eight games on Tychus, seven on Diablo and four on Uther. So some decent hero spread there coming out from Phoenix Rising Amethyst. Illa Dancing Queens, they've been doing quite well coming in at 15 and six on the map record. Similarly, in terms of maps, they played Infernal Shrine seven times and they've been to Tomb of the Spider Queen five times. Most played heroes there. There's a lot of repetition when it comes to Illa Dancing Queens. We got 10 games on Raynor, 10 games on Diablo, and nine games on the Yorick. Looks like we've got ourselves a lobby of Bruin, so let's take you over to the map screen and show you about today's matchup. Phoenix Rising Amethyst choosing to ban away Dragonshire and Tomb of the Spider Queen, whereas Illidancing Queens banned out Braxis Holdout and Hanamura Temple, taking away those two lane maps. The Phoenix Rising Amethyst are bringing us to Cursed Hollow for game number one. All righty. Let me just go ahead and make sure I've got all the right players, and then I'll see if I can get you some cats on stream here. We got Sparrow, Yancy, uh, LDAP is in, Bloody Drapes, and Gunslinger. All right. Got Born, Sesdrin, Dax, Jakebot, and Yotaru. All right, I think I've got everyone. Just gotta move Yotaru over. All right, I'm all set to go. I'm ready for them to draft. I think I'm gonna bring out a cat for you. Come on, Jinjin. Jin. Come on, buddy. The stream people want to see you. Come here. Oh. There we go. For Mrs. Windup Bird, this is Jin. He's very cuddly and very fluffy. He'll stay up here as long as I let him. What a guy. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's eight years old now. We think he's a Nebelung, but we got him from the shelter. And he's as cuddly as they get. And there you go. Here, show yourself to the camera. Yes! It's Jin Jin. Come on, down you go. Alright, that's one cat. After game number... After this one, we'll go get you another one. Unless this takes a little bit. Uh, we'll see if we have time. We're still brewing up this lobby here. Checking in on everyone in chat. We got Valcomer, Dax, Mrs. Windup Bird, Wolf is here. What else did I miss? Who did I miss? Yeah. Lindlunny is here. Welcome, everybody. Wolf, thank you very much for the follow. Let them know that I'm ready. I think we got time to find ourselves a goose. I think if he's out in the hallway, I'll get him. This is Goose. We got Goose about a year ago. He's not as comfortable being held. But he's a nice boy. He's very, very energetic. 
<laughs> so we got a draft brewing here. As I drop all the frames in the world, I think we're coming back. Cursed there we go. Yeah, I know. You want to get down. This is Goose. Say hi. And the cats have been summoned. All right, we're into the draft. It is going to be Illa Dancing Queens that are first to act here on Cursed Hollow. Cursed Hollow, very wide map, not a lot of double soaking opportunities, but there are some opportunities for globals. Uh oh, Mrs. Windup Bird may have missed the cats. Well, I may have to do another one for you. Let me know, Mrs. Windup Bird. I should have checked for you. Zatoichi8, thank you very much for the follow. As Johanna is banned away by Illa Dancing Queens. Good strong tank. Always a good pickup if you can get her. It's a nice informed ban there by Illa Dancing Queens. Phoenix Rising Amethyst thinking about their next ban here. Don't worry, Mrs. Windup Bird. I'll get Jin back for you. He's always comfortable coming up. Li Ming going to be banned away. Looking to control the explosive teamfight potential of the wizard from Chaldean. Jin. Mrs. Windup Bird missed you. Here for a second. Oh. There we go. Say hello. Hello. Come here, buddy. Kael'thas going to be banned away by Illa Dancing Queen, so getting a bit of a choke on the mages here. We'll see if Phoenix Rising Amethyst wants to continue the mage bans, or if they've got something else in mind. Cursed Hollow, you're always thinking about stuff like Brightwing, Falstad, Dahaka, someone who can move around the map and really get that far lane soak. So we'll see what they're going to ban out. It is going to be the Falstad, so trying to control the global options here from Illa Dancing Queens, but that's going to put them on first pick. Alright, buddy. You did a good job. Wave to Mrs. Windup Bird again. Yes! Go see your brother. First pick is in the works here. One global option's been covered, so they might be thinking about that. But with two mages banned out, Sestrin is going to grab up the Orphea first thing. Good pick up there with the globals and the mages being targeted. Grabbing a good one off the bat, definitely strong move. There are definitely still some strong mages available. We got the Tassadar, for example. Sparhawk's gonna go ahead and pick that up, and Eldap taking one of the premier healers here on Cursed Hollow for that tanking capability in Rhaegar. So possibly looking at the old Bloodlust here. Tassadar is surprisingly good for a mage in, in that Bloodlust comp. With Johanna banned away, they're gonna have to think about what tank they wanna put in front of that. Jakebot's going to go ahead and grab the Diablo, and Born to Shine is going to be playing Stukov. So that is telling me that Illa Dancing Queens may be going for a uh, sort of a group AoE Wombo style. You can get the, the stun silence in an area, put the Eternal Feast down, and you can really do some big damage on multiple heroes. Maiev is sometimes paired with that combo with the Warden's Cage, but there's definitely other options. Phoenix Rising Amethyst continuing to lower the global options. Good ban there, as Falstad and Dahaka could definitely have fit into the remaining comp here for Illa Dancing Queens. I doubt they're going to go Stukov Brightwing. And Zagara going to be banned away by Illa Dancing Queens. Sort of a pseudo-global there. You've got to wait till level 10, and you've got to really set up your creep ahead of time. But if you if Zagara gets going, then Zagara really gets going. So Illa Dancing Queen's not wanting to worry about a lot of dodgy split pressure. Phoenix Rising Amethyst. Gunslinger's going to pick up the ETC. And Yahtzee's going to be on the Hanzo. Don't see a lot of Hanzo down here in Division E, but when you're talking about Cursed Hollow, you're talking about interrupting the objective from a safe distance. There's almost no one better at that than Hanzo. 
that very, very long range abilities. And the global stun that comes in from Dragon Arrow. So Yahtzee picking up a uh, potential ace in the hole here for Phoenix Rising Amethyst. Hill Dancing Queens, we're going to see Dax onto the Grey Main, and ooh, Yotaro going to be on the Zul. Now, you're not going to see a lot of double, like, split pressure coming out from Zul because this map is just so big. But the wave clear pressure coming out from Zul and the camp clear pressure coming out from Grey Main will mean that Illidance and Queens will have some tip top macro as long as they're on top of their rotations here. Bloody Drapes thinking about the last pick. We've really got lots of uh, options here. Gonna go with the Sonya in the off lane. Good pick versus Zul for sure. If you go Hurricane at four, you can spin right out of that bone prison. You can heal up off the skeletons that are spawned in lane. Good response there from Phoenix Rising Amethyst. All right, well, we got some good drafts. Look here, we got some good macro presence. We've got some good counter picks. And uh, yeah, can't find a hole in them. Let's see how these two teams clash. Phoenix Rising Amethyst versus Illa Dancing Queens. Here we go. on in here to Cursed Hollow. Nice synergy on both sides. We got some good high execution heroes over on the side of Phoenix Rising Amethyst in that Hanzo Sonya. See what they can do against this Illa Dancing Queen's comp with that Zul pressure. We don't have to wonder anymore because here we go. On the left in the blue we have Phoenix Rising Amethyst. With Yahtzee on the Hanzo, Bloody Drapes is playing Sonya, Eldap is on the Rhaegar, Gunslinger is playing ETC, and it will be Sparhawk on the Tassadar. On the right in the red, it is Illa Dancing Queens with Yotaru on the Zul, Dax is playing Greymane, Born to Shine is on the Stukov, Jakebot is playing Diablo, and Sestrin is on the Orphea. Five, four, three, Getting ready, two, and here one. we go. Go. Let the Gates begin. are up and game number one is underway here on Cursed Hollow. Hanzo going for that scatter arrow quest on one and Tassadar going for the auto attack quest on one. Normally we see the Q quest, but auto attacks from Tassadar can absolutely get a lot of work done, especially with the protection coming out from Rhaegar and ETC. So I'm interested to see what Sparhawk's going to do with that setup. And no other level 1 quests to be found here. As the initial wave clear has begun. Pretty even on both sides. But it looks like Illid Dancing Queens is a little bit ahead on the wave clear, at least at the start. As we see Zul headed down to the bottom lane, trying to cut off the rotation. Bloody Drapes up in the top lane. Gonna be met by Orphea. I have the 3v3 in the mid for now. We're going to see our camps coming up in just a moment. And we'll see. Looks like it's going to be Greymane and Stukov. Oh! Down in the bottom lane, Yotaru picking up the kill onto Tassadar. Tassadar trying to stack up that auto attack quest, but sticking around just a little bit too long in that bone prison. That Zul damage can be a little bit surprising. What did Zul go on one? It was Shackler, so no backlash for the extra burst. But still, Zul can pump out some of the damage. Eldap and Yahtzee electing to go with the Bruiser camp first here on Cursed Hollow with that very strong level one camp clear. Definitely makes some sense there. Sparhawk already back on the battlefield. Gonna go ahead and work on the clear here versus Yotaro as Yahtzee heads on down. Eldap gonna grab the siege camp in the meantime. And Born to Shine and Dax are going to do the opposite. They're going to grab the Bruiser Camp on the right-hand side. Looks like Hanzo is going to hang out here in the bottom lane for a little bit. Help out on this Zul. Yahtzee, of course, working on those Scatter Arrow stacks. Going to definitely be getting a lot of those as the objective comes up. Sestern trying to get away here from Sonya, but Sonya just spinning up and healing right back 
up. LDAP gonna try to time out this camp with the objective. Good macro sense there coming out from Phoenix Rising Amethyst. Wolf out here cheering for heroes rather than teams. My goodness. Ooh, nice unstoppable there by Sparhawk, avoiding another Bone Prison gank from Yotaru. Sonya taken out in the top lane by Sestron, so another solo lane kill going the way of Illa Dancing Queens. It looks like Illa Dancing Queens may have the control. Oh, Sparhawk actually going down to the jailers of that Bone Prison, so that's three solo lane ganks coming in here for Illa Dancing Queens. And they're going to go ahead and control this first objective. Right now, Phoenix Rising Amethyst just sort of stuck in lane. There's no way that they can come in and contest, so they're just going to grab as much XP as possible. Heading up to the top lane, going to soak those orbs. Oh, Sestrin could be in some trouble here. Gunslinger getting the knockback, not finding the stun on the slide, though. And we're going to see Illa Dancing Queens go up 7-6 to six in terms of experience here. Dax gets hit by Yahtzee, needs one more hit. Oh, Dax manages to get away. Yotaru's on the chase. Nice gank attempt here by Phoenix Rising Amethyst, almost finding Greymane in the bottom lane. Checking in on the experience, it looks like it is a minion lead and a hero experience lead that are putting Illa Dancing Queens at the almost one level lead they're at right now. Yotaru is getting some good work down here in the bottom lane. There's the static wall coming out from Tassadar, putting some damage onto Zul. Yeah, check back in on the mid lane here. It looks like Tassadar may need a little bit of help. As Zul is really putting the hurt on the Tassadar here. There's a root once again. Sparhawk trying to get away. Oh, manages to get out with 29 health there. Very nicely done. Looking for... The next objective here is Phoenix Rising Amethyst moving on down. As I very quickly close one of the instances of my chatbot as it's saying everything twice. Jakebot finding the stun onto Yahtzee, but there's the trade over the wall. Dax is in deep, trying to find the last hit here onto Hanzo. Eldap comes around, and uh oh Dax is in a tough place. Gunslinger slides onto three. There's Born to Shine putting up the silent zone. Sparhawk now caught on the wrong side of things, and it's going to be Tassadar down first. Somehow, Dax still alive here. Dueling versus Gunslinger. Yotaru's on the chase, pushing Hanzo on out. And Illa Dancing Queen. Oh, Jakebot finds the... Stun onto the wall, but Gunslinger moves away from the overpower. So one kill there for Illa Dancing Queens. They pick up this second curse point. Uh-oh, Eldap being rooted again. Here comes Jakebot looking for the overpower. Rhaegar in some trouble down here, trying to squeeze away on four health. Oh, Eldap! Oh, no, the Jailers get the final hit onto Rhaegar. I thought that Eldap was out of there. It was the Fade Away Jailers from Yotaru. Very nicely done. We have level 10s here for Illa Dancing Queens. It is the Flailing Swipe, Go for the Throat, Apocalypse, Poison Nova, and the Crushing Jaws for Orphea. As Bloody Drapes having some trouble here in the top lane versus the range damage of Orphea. That's a very tough matchup for Sonya. Looking at the third curse point here for Illa Dancing Queens. Sparhawk just trying to soak as safely as possible versus the pressure coming out from Zul. It's tough though, there's a lot of kill pressure, especially with this two level lead. And it looks like Sestrin is going to secure the first curse of the game for Illa Dancing Queens. Bloody Drapes being keyed onto by Jakebot. Nice rotation there from Illa Dancing Queens. Picks up the kill. And they're going to push with this curse here in the top lane. Eldap trying to get some counter pressure with this Bruiser Camp. Yahtzee picking up the Siege Camp on the left-hand side as well to try to de-push this lane. 45 seconds on the curse. Azul has claimed the bottom fort. Sparhawk starting to move back here. Top fort taken as well. Phoenix Rising Amethyst managed to save their mid fort for now. Gunslinger moving on in here, getting stunned out by Jakebot. Having to use the face melt and the slide to get on out of there. Zyatsi and Eldap making their way over to the wall. Curse expiring in about 10 seconds here as Sparhawk clears the bottom lane. Mostly saves that bottom keep wall. But Illa Dancing Queens, they want this mid-fort. 
They're gonna go ahead and clear away the minions and get on top of the fort, but it's about to reactivate. Bloody Drapes pops the... Gosh, I can't remember. The Wrath of the Berserker and goes in. There's the Dragon Strike from Yahtzee splitting Illa Dancing Queens. Gunslinger's looking for an angle here as Bloody Drapes spins to win on top of Yotaru. Eldap gets hit with the Bone Prison, but is underneath the fort is going to be safe for now. Apocalypse coming out. It's going to stun Gunslinger. Stukov's down first, but the counter kill onto ETC. Yotaru trying to get away from Sparhawk will do so with under 50 health underneath that bone armor. So it's a one for one here in the mid lane. What action to be had. Mr. Born to Shine, thank you very much for the follow. And Moist Weenus with the 69. Thanks for the bits, buddy. Hope you're having a great evening. So we see Dax going ahead and working on the right side bruiser here for Illa Dancing Queen. Sparhawk starting to get some stacks there on that quest. 120 out of 160. Going to see that resonance beam start to bounce. That's really where this auto attack build from Tassadar starts to shine. Hello Dancing Queen's gonna work on the top right boss while Phoenix Rising Amethyst gonna go ahead and work on the bottom left. Some good macro sense coming up from our teams once again here. Speaking of heroics, let's check in on the heroics of Phoenix Rising Amethyst. We have the Black Hole, it is the Dragon Strike from Hanzo, Ancestral Healing, Mosh Pit, and Wrath of the Berserker. Zyotaro clearing the mid lane, trying to lead the way here for this Bruiser camp. Bloody Drapes pops the Berserker Wrath, and it's going to start to move back here. Uses the Unstoppable to get away from the Bone Prison. And that's Tassadar finishing that level 1 quest. Nice little power spike there as we see Sparhawk just pushing alongside this boss. Zyotaro coming on down here to try to find the kill onto Sparhawk. Just going to move Tassadar away. Nice force wall there. It's going to keep Sparhawk nice and safe. Bottom boss is still plugging away here in the bottom lane as top boss is onto this keep wall. Yahtzee and Bloody Drapes gonna go ahead and clear that up. Tassadar could be in some trouble here. Pops the Unstoppable, but the full rotation from Illa Dancing Queens finds Tassadar in the bottom lane on their way to clear this boss. Yahtzee and Eldap keeping up with the macro here, getting right on top of this siege camp. And it looks like Illa Dancing Queens gonna pick up, pick up their fourth point on the curse here. Phoenix Rising, Amethyst, they've still got all their keeps, but they've got to find an answer here and they've got to find it soon because they're about to go down level 16 talents. Whoa, seven gifted subs coming out from Death Futon. Thank you very much. We'll check in and read those off after the game. It looks like we may have a scuffle here in the mid lane. Death Futon, thank you so much for the gifts. That does unlock a new emote. Oh my gosh, eight more coming in from Restamag. It's a total subathon. I'll get to all those names. Thank you so much for the gifted subs. I'm going to hear that notification sound going off this whole time, even though you all can't hear it. Getting set up for this next tribute. Gunslinger finds Jakebot on the rotation. Shut and charge. On to ETC in the back, Jakebot healing up with that Feast on Fear. A great Dragon Strike from Yahtzee is going to cut off the members of Villa Dancing Queens. Greymane's going to go down first. Born to Shine trying to peel away with the Flailing Swipe. But it is... Uh oh Sparhawk getting hit by the Crushing Jaws. Jakebot with the Shadow Charge overpower once again. Gunslinger with a great peel is going to keep Sparhawk in this fight. But is going to go down. The counter kill onto ETC is complete. Bloody Drapes trying to spin and survive. Moving on back. Oh, gets away from the Poison Nova just barely. So a one for one, but Illa Dancing Queens control the space and pick up their fifth curse point of this game. Bruiser Camp Steel coming in here for Illa Dancing Queens. Bloody Drapes is going to see it. Are we going to see Phoenix Rising Amethyst move in? They're poking up. Uh oh, Bloody Drapes is inside the silence. That's not good. Going to have to start backing off. There's the auto attack. The Resonance Beam getting the kill onto Stukov. This Tassadar is just popping off in this corridor. Camp Steel is completed here, but they lose their healer. There's the Black Hole coming out from Sparhawk trying to auto attack, but Jakebot comes in and gets the wall pin. Hanzo down as well as Gunslinger trying to get away. As Look at Dax with the go for the throat. 
ETC is down. Bloody Drapes is being body blocked. That's going to be Sonya. So Phoenix Rising Amethyst finds one, but Illa Dancing Queens clap back with the four kills. And they're going to be looking for this mid keep. Mid keep starting to go down here. 10 seconds till Hanzo and Tassadar are back on the field. Will Illa Dancing Queens think about core here? Looks like they're going to grab the keep. Going to go for a double keep play. LDAP could be caught out here. Yotaro's on the chase. Bone Prison is out. Jakebot with the overpower. Gets the self ancestral. But there's the Poison Nova's going to secure the kill onto Rhaegar. Working on this top keep. Yotaro being targeted here by Sparhawk. Sestrin gets hit with the black hole. Sparhawk's going to make Illidans and Queens back on up. But it was Born to Shine picking up the curse. We're going to have another curse here coming in for Illidans and Queens. Gunslinger and Bloody Drapes. There's a face melt from Gunslinger. Jakebot finds the pin onto the wall. There's the follow-up trying to lead them away from Bloody Drapes. So that's ETC going down here. Illidans and Queens is thinking about the core. The pin is good, the overpower was not there, and it looks like Illidancing Queens is thinking about core. Dax jumps in, and is going to start peeling away these shields. There's still four people here on the defense here for Phoenix Rising Amethyst. There's the Unstoppable. Bloody Drapes trying to get the final hit onto Jakebot. Dragon Strike is out. That's going to be Diablo going down. And Illidancing Queens is being rebuffed here. Born to Shine trying to get away. The Flailing Swipe is out. The Dax goes the kill onto Rhaegar. 40% on the core. The minions are just shredding away. The core Hanzo is down, and that's going to be it. Illa Dancing Queens pick up game number one. GG. All right, a quick look at the post game stats 17 to 4 there for Illa Dancing Queens. It was Sestrin on the Orphea leading the way on the hero damage with 57k. And Sparhawk for Phoenix Rising Amethyst with the 37,000 hero damage. They were starting to turn things around there in the later fights, but ultimately the turn from Illa Dancing Queen is just a little bit too strong. And game number one goes to the red team. Go ahead and pick up uh, or take a quick look at the talents. And then we'll get set up here for game number two. All right. Oh my goodness. Seven gifted subs from Death Futon. Eight gifted subs from Restamac, my friends, for the longest time. Thank you so much for your support. That means we get a new emote. I get to finalize it. I'm going to upload it. Everyone who got gifted subs is going to get the newest GG emote. Let's read off the names here. The Lazy Hydra, X-Ray Lud, Mrs. Windup Bird, Woe No, Thou Shall Parry 777, Helix Apothecary, Special Kid Miles, Aven Felth 11, Joe Zombie 93, The Real Tabasco 1, D Nasty 10, Ewok Thor, Caltania, Dropping Babies, and Drat TTV. Welcome to the Crushin' Nation. Thank you so much for your support. Thanks for hanging out and being a part of this community. It means a lot to me. I, I've been just so blessed to have the support I have through the NGS, through the Heroes community in general, and through everyone here on Twitch. So thank you so, so much for being here. We're going to go to a quick break. And when we come on back, it's going to be game number two between Phoenix Rising Amethyst and Illa Dancing Queens. Don't go far.
Welcome back. We've got ourselves a lobby. Phoenix Rising Amethyst versus Illa Dancing Queens getting ready for game number two. And Dax with five more gifted subs. Very so generous. Let me see. Lind Lunny, Erndur Sterner, Big Salsa, Death Futon, and Daisy Maid 128k. My chatbot gets the sub. Oh. Feels good, man. That's 30 subscriber points. I think there's five more coming through. That's got to update. Oh my goodness. Let's go to the map screen. We've got a cast to do. And let's take a look here. Reminder, Dragonshire, Tomb of the Spider Queen, Braxis Holdout, and Hanamura Temple are banned for today's matchup. Cursed Hollow was won by Illa Dancing Queens, and now Illa Dancing Queens is going to be taking us to Infernal Shrines. By far the most played map for both of these teams for game number two. My goodness. Is that, I think that's live. That's 30 sub points right now. 30 out of 35. How many more emotes am I going to have to think up? I've got ideas. I've got the GG. I've got the Howdy. There was one more. What was, what was it going to be? Okay, I gotta think. We're gonna have a draft here in a second. It was GG, it was Howdy, it was something else. I've got a, like, I've got a whole folder of them. Let's get into the draft. Let's get into the draft. We're getting ready here for game number two. Phoenix Rising Amethyst versus Illa Dancing Queens. This time, Phoenix Rising Amethyst will have the first pick and first ban. See if there's gonna be any... Respect bands coming out from our squads. Any change up in strategies? Infernal Shrines, definitely a map where double soaking is possible. Globals can still get a lot of work done, but you can get those Leorix, those Malfeels, those Zools across multiple lanes, unlike Cursed Hollow. Thank you all so much in the chat for all the love. It's. Oh. Wow. <laughs> the support is just unfreaking real. Greymane going to be banned away here by Phoenix Rising Amethyst. Don't want the Bark Boy coming at him once again. Squats coming out from Restamac. All right, we'll do some squats in this here draft. Johanna once again going to be banned away by Illa Dancing Queens. All right, let's bang up 10. One. Phoenix Rising Amethyst with the next ban. Taking away the Greymane. Wouldn't be surprised to see a Zul ban considering how well Kyotaru played it last game. Eight, nine, eight, nine, ten. Instead, they're going to take away Sestrin's Orphea. So wanting to make sure Illa Dancing Queens does not get the same comp as last time. Good reactions there by Phoenix Rising Amethyst. Illa Dancing Queens. See if they stick with the same band sequence. They do. It's going to be Kael'thas taken off the board once again here. <sighs> wolf. Sad that the Wolfman will not hit the battlefield for this game. <laughs> Diablo can be picked up here by Sparhawk. So that's a third hero from Illa Dancing Queens that will not be available to them this game. We'll see... They've got Zul and Stukov available from the last comp. We'll see if either of those get prioritized here by Illidance and Queens. I think Zul definitely works here on Infernal Shrines. Drink Water Streamer, that's a great idea. ETC and Tassadar are going to be picked up here by Jakebot and Sestrin. So saying, if you're going to take our heroes, we'll just take yours. Don't mind if we do. Cheers. Next two picks here coming in for Phoenix Rising Amethyst. They've got their Diablo. We'll see if they go with the Wombo style or if they're going to go for a pick style comp. Abathur for Gunslinger and Eldap is going to be playing Malfurion. All right, so we've got some we've got some trickery here on the side of Phoenix Rising Amethyst. 
You can get some, definitely get some work done with a juiced up Diablo with that Abathur hat. But we'll see what Phoenix Rising Aphthus wants to pair along with the Slug. The Dancing Queen says they don't want to see a charged up Vala. So gonna go ahead and take that off the board. Phoenix Rising Amethyst with the next ban. They're looking at a Tassadar ETC. If they go along with the plan from last time. Let's see if they ban away the Zul here. I would do it. I'm gonna ban away Kel'Thuzad. Interesting. Maybe they saw something in the scouting that I didn't. I didn't get I didn't get to do a full scout today, so maybe Kel'Thuzad was possibly in the cards here for Illa Dancing Queens. Bonkai with the 10 squats. Oh, so Maiev was a possibility. Dax going to pick up the Maiev. And Born to Shine is going to go back on that Stukov. I'll tell you what, I'll hit the, I'll hit the squats instead of doing the normal loadup for the game. We'll do a squat loadup. How about that? Yahtzee and Bloody Drapes thinking about their last two picks here for Phoenix Rising Amethyst. Got the Abathur, so they've got to make sure that their lanes are covered and they've got to bring some big, big damage. See what their choices are going to be. It's going to be Gazlo in for Bloody Drapes and Phoenix, played by Yahtzee. Talk about big damage and talk about covering lanes. Those two heroes absolutely fit the bill. All right. Cute. Pretty cool little comp coming out here from Phoenix Rising Amethyst. Phoenix with some good wave clear can cover lanes. Gazlo with a lot of lot more damage than you think, able to cover lanes. Let's see an Abathur hat Gazlo. That's that's a combo I've not seen yet. Hill of Dancing Queens looking at their last pick. Yotaro gonna go right back to the Zool to try to counter this Gazlo. Alrighty. The table is set. Phoenix Rising Amethyst will clash against Illa Dancing Queens here on Infernal Shrines. Oh, there was a switch. Sestrin's going to be playing Maiev. Dax is on Tassadar. All right. Game number two. Phoenix Rising Amethyst versus Illa Dancing Queens. Here we go. And no load-up video. Instead, you get squats. And also, Bonkai coming in with the Prime sub. Let's turn that into some more squats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, we got a game to cast. Bonkai, thank you so much for the sub. Thank you for the support as my chair is caught on the map. There we go. All right, let's jump into the game. Game number two is set up on the left in the blue. We have Phoenix Rising Amethyst. With Yahtzee on the Phoenix, Sparhawk is going to be playing Diablo. Gunslinger is on the Abathur. Whew. Bloody Drapes on the Gazlo and Eldap on the Malfurion. On the right in the red, we have Illid Dancing Queens with Jakebot on the ETC, Dax on the Tassadar, Born to Shine playing Stukov, Sezdrin is on the Maiev, and Yotaru is on the Zul. Here we go. Game number two here on Infernal Shrines. A little bit of old, a little bit of new for these two teams. We'll see how the strategy switch here for Phoenix Rising Amethyst works. Sestron warping on in here, but not finding the chains. Jakebot sliding on through Sparhawk. There's the Tassadar wall, but that's going to block Jakebot as well. Yahtzee putting out the big damage on to ETC. There's the route onto Diablo. The silence coming out as well, but it looks like Sparhawk staying nice and healthy here. Sestron getting a few Fan of Knives resets. So no initial kill here in the mid lane. Dax in the bottom lane going to be trying to clear away this Tassadar Parasite. Bloody Drapes is going to be moved on to by Zul. We're going to see our teams go ahead and start their camps. Illidan and Queens starting up their right side Khazra. 
Yahtzee going straight to the bottom camp, trying to get a little bit of a steal here. As Sparhawk and Eldap maintaining presence in the lane, Gunslinger has moved up to soak the mid. The Ladancing Queens finds their right side cap. Can Yahtzee and Eldap finish this up fast enough? I don't think they can. Sestrin is warping on in. And this could be trouble. Sparhawk trying to peel away with the Shadow Charge. It's going to be Phoenix going down first. First, that Silent Zone is just so deadly. And Diablo is going to go down. Sestrin chasing out Eldap. That's two kills there for Illidancing Queens. And that point control coming out from Stukov and Maiev was very difficult to deal with. Checking in on the top lane matchup. It looks like Zul had to tap there for some mana. Bloody Drapes on the Gazlo, of course, having no mana. And therefore, being the best solo laner of all time. Left side cause for Steel coming in from Illidancing Queens. Now, this is one thing that you're going to run into with the Abathur comps, is you get the reduced lane presence in the early levels. That means you often take a little bit of a disadvantage in the early going. Once the first objective comes up, that's when you start to see that advantage start to evaporate as Abathur soaks those off lanes and maintains lane presence throughout the entire game. It's going to be an Arcane Shrine in the top lane. Looks like Bloody Drapes is doing pretty well down, pretty well up here in the top lane versus this Zul. The Dancing Queens is on top of the right side Siege, getting that right on time. Phoenix Rising Amethyst going to go ahead and clear away the remainder of these Khazra. Jakebot working to find level 6 here in the bottom lane. The Shrine is now activating. Bloody Drapes trying to set up those turrets. The shrine is active. See Phoenix Rising Amethyst picking up their own Shaman Camp here. And that's going to allow Illa Dancing Queens to start up their minion clear. Jakebot is seen in the bush here. Going to have to start moving up as Sparhawk and crew. Getting, they're starting to move on to the point. 18 minions killed here by Illa Dancing Queens as Phoenix Rising Amethyst gains the superior position on this point so far. Sestrin looking for those Phantom Knives resets once again. Yahtzee trying to regenerate that shield. Moving in on the outside. Sparhawk finds the pin onto Jakebot. There's the route onto the back line from Eldap. But the Silent Zone, once again, is causing Diablo all sorts of problems. And that's going to be Sparhawk going down. Sestrin moving on to Yahtzee, trying to peel away that shield of Phoenix. Bloody Drapes staying healthy with that shielding. But the stun is good from Jakebot. The body block is there. And it's going to be a double kill for Illa Dancing Queens. Yahtzee playing very aggressively on that Phoenix. Still 32 uh, to 23 on these minions. Eldap and Yahtzee thinking about moving in here, but that could be a trap. As we see, Yutaru will get the final clear here on the minions, and we are going to have our first Punisher of the game. I thought I banned Big Follows. Oh well. Punisher baited over the wall here by Sparhawk. We're going to see it peeled away. Actually focusing on the well right now. Interesting little position there. Good job by Sparhawk staying far away from Illa Dancing Queens, making sure there's no follow-up possible. And they save their top fort. Very nicely done. In the offlane, we see Gazlo going up against this Zul. Thinking about starting up this camp, but that could be trouble. Jakebot is moving on in. There's another camp steal coming out. There's the silence from Born to Shine. Not going to find Bloody Drapes, and it looks like Gazlo is going to move away here. Hello, Dancing Queens. Sparhawk thinking about coming in, but doesn't have the rest of the crew here. Finds the stun onto Sendra. Sestra, and there's the silence. Sparhawk's going to start moving out of there. Hits the unstoppable just in case and will escape. But it is Illa Dancing Queens that get the camp steal and start moving to grab as many camps as they can. Looking to find level 10 very early here. Gazlo going to rotate up to the top lane, try to find any advantage that they can get. Bottom camp has been captured. 
Going for the triple here is Illidancing Queens. They are going to find the level 10. Phoenix Rising Amethyst is going to have to just soak as safely as they can until they get heroics of their own. Illidancing Queens, we've got the Flailing Swipe, Mosh Pit, Archon, Crushing Jaws, and Zul still thinking about the pick here. As we see Zul, good rotation there from Gazlo. Going to be spotted by Jakebot, but on the way out. Bloody Drapes doing a great job of soaking as safely as possible. Hello, Dancing Queens. Thinking about moving on to this top fourth. They've got the minion wave, but Sparhawk is here to try to defend. There's the force wall from Dax, the slide through from Jakebot, and there is a great combo. Oh, Dax in some trouble. Gonna get away from the four shots. Thinking about moving on back to heal those Protoss wounds. Top fort has been taken here. Phoenix getting some free push down here in the bottom lane. Phoenix Rising Amethyst find their heroics. It is going to be the Apocalypse Twilight Dream, the ultimate evolution for Abathur, Gravel Bomb coming out for Gazlo, and the Planet Cracker for Phoenix. Both Shaman Camps going to be worked on by our two squads. Zul doing a great job of keeping these lanes tended to. Zul, the gardener of all lanes. Jakebot thinking about moving in here, but Phoenix Rising Amethyst on top of their macro. Oh no, Gunslinger on the Abathur is found in that mid section. There's the Apocalypse Peel coming in from Sparhawk. Gravel Bomb is out. It's going to catch Dax. The follow up stun is good, and there goes Tassadar. Warden's Cage from Sestrin is trying to get those Phantom Knives resets. Fall to the Warden's on out of there. There's the Planet Cracker. Yahtzee is plugging away onto Jakebot. Somehow, oh, ETC still alive. Maiev is taken out in the process. So Phoenix Rising Amethyst, they find their kill after three coming out from Illa Dancing Queens. Very good job of fighting underneath this mid fort. But it is going to be Illa Dancing Queens that are on top of this frozen Punisher in the mid lane. Bloody Drapes going to have to be careful in lane. Trying to run a slide on through. There's the stun. Bone Prison is out. There's the silence. And that's going to be a dead Gazlo here in the mid lane. Yeah, the Dancing Queen's taking control here on this mid shrine. Top lane pressure is going to have to be dealt with here by Yahtzee and Sparhawk. So Phoenix Rising Amethyst is going to give up the objective to try to settle these lanes. No Dancing Queen's just trying to get this done as quickly as possible. So we see Jakebot just warding away, making sure that there's no invade coming in. Yotaru, with that Jailer's build, gonna go ahead and pick up the bottom Khazra. The Dancing Queen's gonna leave this at 39, go ahead and try to stack those camps. As we see Dax here, oh, this could be trouble. Sparhawk finds Tassadar, but manages to dimensional shift on out of there. And now we've got a camp invade coming in here from Illidancing Queens. Here's the ultimate evolution from Gunslinger. It's going to be a double Gazlo. There's the Poison Nova from Zul, though. Silence Arrow is out. Gravel Bomb is going to catch and stun ETC. Jakebot trying to get away here, but there's the pin from Diablo. Malfurion goes down in the background. Yahtzee taken out, but there goes Maiev. It's a bloodbath. Two for two here. Bloody Drapes moves back and manages to pick up the camp here for Phoenix Rising Amethyst. Phoenix Rising Amethyst looks like they were caught out on that camp, but they turn things around. They get the two for two. And the Illa Dancing Queen is just going to stall this out further. Bloody Drapes thinking about moving in, but there's a long way to go, and there's only one minion left to capture here on this point. Illa Dancing Queen's trying to wait till they're back at full strength. They've got the chance to wait because they're so far ahead on this objective. Phoenix Rising Amethyst just going ahead and moving back. They've got to think about soaking, think about finding level 16 here. As we see Dax popping that Punisher, it's going to be a frozen Punisher here in the mid lane. It's going to run into the fort first. Finding level 15 here is Phoenix Rising Amethyst. Zul continuing the split push. It's going to be a full defense here. Bloody Drape stunned by the Immortal. The Unstoppable is out, but body blocked here 
Gaslow's gonna go down. There's Silent Zone from Stukov, too much to handle. Sparhawk finds the flip and moves in onto Stukov, but the slows are too much. The stomp from the Punisher to seal it. That's Diablo down, gonna reset those souls. Poisonova lands onto Yahtzee. Heldath doing their best to heal up the Dragoon. Midkeep wall is down. Punisher is gonna be on top of the keep. There's the Archon from Dax. Double stun. Oh, there's a mosh pit coming out from Jakebot. It's gonna find the kill onto Phoenix. Gunslinger on the Abathur clone. Trying to get some damage in on the side lane. Diablo taken down once again with that reduced spell armor. And Illa Dancing Queens is gonna move right onto the core here. Looks like that is going to be it. 50% and there it goes. Illa Dancing Queens pick up the game and pick up the series. GG. Take a quick look at the endgame screen. 14 kills to 4. Once again, Phoenix Rising Amethyst showing some promising signs in those mid-fights, finding some even kills, finding some good invades, but in the end, Illa Dancing Queen's just overwhelming power coming out from the damage, coming out from the split push Zool. Finish things off in game number 2. Sestron on the Mayav leading the way on the hero damage for Illa Dancing Queen's at 36k. Yahtzee on the Phoenix, on top for Phoenix Rising Amethyst at about 22,500 hero damage. Another quick check-in on the talents, and then we'll see if we can find ourselves an interview with our victors. All right, that's going to be our series. Let's see if we can find ourselves an interview with the Illa Dancing Queens. Thank you all in chat today. Once again, so, so generous. Love all the interaction. Love cheering on your squad. Looks like we are going to get an interview. So let's move on up. Make sure we're ready to go. Born to Shine, welcome and congratulations on the 2-0. Hi, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for casting. My pleasure entirely. Looking pretty good out there. Two quick victories. Uh, let's talk yeah. about uh, the uh, the Game 2 draft there. When you saw the Abathur come on out from Phoenix Rising Amethyst, was there any, mm -hmm. uh, any sort of draft adjustments you had to make at that point? Uh, I mean, we knew we were going to have to, you know, keep an eye on our lanes. You know, we can't let Abathur get away with Abathur things. Uh, so, yeah, we were just keeping an eye on that and making sure that we could, um, you know, account for that pick. Absolutely. Yeah, we saw some. Uh, you did find the one Abathur ki kill there in the mid lane. <laughs> a couple yep. of those uh, a couple of those fights were starting to look a little dicey towards the mid game there. Yeah, there were a couple of sketchy, sketchy engagements there. <laughs> a couple of spots that looked like the chokehold was starting to favor the uh, the Diablo Planet Cracker combo, but yes, yeah, great. Honestly, just looking at the Stukov play, fantastic job on those silent zones, always on time with the uh, with the CC chain, and that's just so hard to deal with when you can't click your buttons at all. <laughs> to try to get away from a gank. So very nice job there. Yeah, thank you. It's something, you know, I've been working on. Looked very good out there for sure. Uh, talk to me a little bit about Zul. Coming in both games there, um, Cursed Hollow is not a map we often see Zul on since the split push potential, even taking camps is a little bit awkward there. Is that really like Yotar is just super comfortable on Zul going to take it on any map? Um... <sighs> You know, I, I, I don't know that I would say, like, take him on any map, but, um, you know, it's something that, you know, we're comfortable with and we know, like, you know, he can hold his own in the off lane, you know, make sure he gets that soak and, and handle himself. Um, and we can, you know, he doesn't necessarily have to take every camp on the map. Like you said, it is a real big map. So, you know, it's more just about making sure there's someone in the off lane who can be by themselves and handle themselves and be comfortable with it. Okay, yeah. Zul, I mean, just the wave clear pressure alone coming in with the bone prison is such a clear shot call that 
definitely not relegated to the simple double soak, and we saw that coming out in uh, in this series for sure. Yep. So coming into the closing weeks here in NGS, we've got I think one more week left, and then we're thinking about playoffs. Yep. In the position you're in, you got to feel pretty good about your spot. Are there any uh, any teams at the top you're feeling a little worried about? Any pocket strats you're developing here for uh, for the playoffs? Well, we're gonna keep any pocket strap strats uh, under wraps for sure. <laughs> can't can't give the competition, you know, a leg up on us. <laughs> um, but I think you know we're looking forward to playoffs. Uh, we missed out on them last year. So we are excited to make them this year. And, you know, we're looking forward to any of the rematches that come our way. Um, yeah, for that. All right, fantastic. If you are thinking of pocket strats, all I'm saying is Artanis is awesome. You should play them <laughs> every game. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll add that to my notes here. <laughs> Excellent. All right, well, congratulations on the 2-0 victory. Are there any shout outs you'd like to make before we close things down here? Thank you. Uh, shout out first and foremost, and as always, to my team. You know, great job, guys. Um, you know, we showed up. Practice is paying off. Um, shout outs to PRA. You know, thanks for the game tonight. Um, and for you, to you, Crush, rather, for casting. Uh, we really appreciate it. It's always fun to go back and watch the VODs. Um, and just to um, Scott and Mr. Bourne, watching and supporting in uh, the stream in chat, as always. Great community presence today. Everyone cheering on their squads. Awesome to see for sure. All right, Bourne, thank you very much for joining me and good luck going forward. Yep. Thank you very much. Have a good night. You as well. All righty. Well, I am just blown away. 21 subs coming through. And today, I've got some emotes coming for you guys soon, soon, soon. Don't worry about that. But that will be it for tonight's matchup. Thank you so much for coming on by. Thank you for spending your bananas, dropping the follows, dropping the subs, the bits, everything. This is such a fantastic community, and I am looking forward to being more and more a part of it every single day. I appreciate you all so much. If you've not yet followed the channel and you want to see every time I go live with some more Heroes of the Storm NGS action, just throw the channel a follow and you will be notified. When I'm not here, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at The Crushinator, and you can find me every cast that I do in a condensed, spoiler-free VOD over on YouTube. Just search for The Crushinator and you will find me.